Well, I, I will try to explain very quickly um, the, 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 you know, the objective facts of, um, of the project that you will talk about. Uh, it's a pity we don't have an internet connection, so we could uh, you know, uh, dive a little bit in the content, but I will, took I will take advantage of my first slide to, just to give you a ge geographical indications of, of how we are organized. In, uh, in the radio, as I explained before, we started with a single program, that is the red one, Sonia, that it's, uh, it's been in the, in the project since then. And Sonia, it's completely related with the activity of the museum. And uh, essentially, we have two kinds of programming. The ones that are related with the activity, somehow, and the others that are exploring uh, the, the, the elements of, of sound, experimental music, etc. Those related with the activity in the museum are Sonia and Specials, the, the good one. Uh, we never intend to illustrate what happens in the, in the museum. Those programs, they stand alone. They are never like they are never like guided tours. You will never find a lecture from somebody who came in the museum. You can you can find that in the main website, the institutional website. This is the experimental, the laboratory, and the programs are uh, made. Even they are related with with the activity. They are open to work with the curators, artists, and uh, make interviews to people coming to the museum. But uh, we try to make them a way that, that they can stand alone by themselves. So if you go now uh, to listen to one of the sonias that we published maybe six months ago, it will still have sense to, to listen to it. And uh, to go very quickly, in the other hand, the programs that they uh, have their own line of uh, you know, research, um, are curatorial research and Quaderns uh, d'Audio. Quaderns d'Audio is a line of publishing material. They are kind of booklets. Uh, so in this case, it's not sound, it's text. Uh, but curatorial and research, uh, they are the two lines of programming. Inside of them, you will find different programs as well. Uh, those are the programs that we work directly with creators, uh, such as the people that you just listen to. And uh, this is a line of you know, research and investigation that is not related directly with the activity of the museum. It has uh, its own um, topics, issues, and, uh, and so on. In the, in the main, um, in the home page, you will always find featured the latest programs, so you can have a, a quick, a, a quick uh, in, in just one glance, you can see what, what's new. Uh, we need to renew this website since maybe three years ago, but we don't have any budget for that. Um, actually, now I will go to the last uh, of my slides, because I... I have uh, some numbers to share with you. Um, we, are, um, we are posting um, about three or four programs or capsules per month. Uh, as I was explaining before, we have more than 400 published programs. Um, we have about 6,500 Maybe lately about, let's say, 500 visits per month and uh, over 30,000 downloads. Um, our our uh, users come from 19 different countries, mainly from the uh, United States, United Kingdom and, uh, and uh, Germany. Um, we have uh, social profiles in Twitter and also in Pinterest. And uh, in Twitter, we have a very strong community of, um, I mean, solid community, not some, uh, with uh, 4,600 followers. Um, and uh, in an institutional sense, we have one staff uh, member exclusively dedicated uh, to the project, that is Anna, and, uh, and me, who, who I'm not 
in my everyday life working on it, but it takes part of my responsibility because some uh, critical situations inside the institution, maybe we can talk about this later on. And, uh, and we work with about a group of 10, 12 freelance contributors uh, that go from creators to audio producers, uh, different kinds of, pro of profiles. And uh, this year, uh, our budget um, was it's uh, 23,604 euros. Uh, we were cut in a 40, in a, yes, in a 40, 100 percent last year. Uh, and uh, this uh, budget is uh, only for production and things related exclusively with the uh, content production. If uh, that's why we cannot uh, renew the website, this is and uh, in case we need some equipment or something, uh, we try to pay it from another budget and keep this one exclusively for the content production and uh, the fees for our collaborators. And uh, this is more or less. Do you think it's enough, Georgiana? Yeah, because um, this is more or less the object objective. Uh, you know, data about that, uh, about the project. Um, and maybe, I don't know, Max, where do you want us to start? Or do you want me to explain something more about the project? Any questions? You know, I, I, didn't, I didn't think I'll very much about how to... Oh, then I... Is. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Is it okay? I, I unplug and unplug. Yes, sure, sure, sure. Yes. Um, no. Okay, but I, I, I I'll try to continue this in some way. Um. <clears throat> Let's see if it's um, connected. Yeah. I can take the headset, yes, it's true. Mm. That's a good idea. <coughs> can, I, can I see the headset for a moment? Oh, sorry. Of course, I'm uh, happy right. to, <laughs> <laughs> to not be my Sharing is caring. Yeah. Thing. See. Okay, so I'm Max Valentine. I run a small agency called Fallen. And uh, I'm here to talk about how a book can be used within the institution. And uh, so it's more of a generalizing this experience maybe in some way. So, my, uh, and the, why I talk about this is that with the, the Fabel company that I've been running for 12 years, we've been interested very much in the digitalization of the cultural landscape and participatory culture. We run different projects, one called Crowd Culture, that is about uh, co public co-funding in crowdfunding. And we have been running a network called Lunchbeat, that is an improvised dance community. But we also produce a couple of podcasts. Um, and we can, of course, we, this is obvious for everyone that it's, it comes from the radio broadcast and now we talk about podcast. The, the strange thing is why it's not called ROD, I think, because it's, it should be in some way radio on demand. That's what it is about. But uh, it's Apple that defined this pod thing by launching the iPod a couple of years back. And that, that's why it's called what it's called. It's more of a branding thing. And in a way, the, 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 what, what this where conference comes down to is very much about different frequencies. Um, and the, the, one of the few differences between podcast and the radio is on the, what bandwidth they are on. Like if, we, if we see the, the radio bandwidth, it's uh, down there on the, the megahertz uh, band, we know 99. 0.3 megahertz, etc., can be P3 in Stockholm, whilst the pod is distributed 
slightly below the visual light. It's just a little bit more to the infrared when it goes in the, um, in the fibers. While the audio is way down there when you listen to me now through the membrane and this fantastic construction we have outside of here. The, the waves are, I read, 17 kilometers long. That's quite amazing. So it's very low down there. But the sound is not electromagnetic, it's pressure through here. Okay, but it's wavelengths. So we have both, on, on this we have both wavelength and uh, the elect and the frequency. So, but it, it's comparable in wavelength, still, wouldn't you say? Yes. So, it, it, but they go cross. Okay, this is not a physics lesson. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, then the question is, what is a podcast? Um, and to me anyway, and to many I've seen online defining it, it's a, it's a series of audio files uh, in MP3 format that can be downloaded and that are recurrently updated and that you can subscribe to through some kind of uh, software. And uh, they can be distributed either through the iTunes uh, or on Android or on others. So it's, it's easy for the user to subscribe to them and they are push noticed when there are updates coming. And so it, it's, it's a way that you can create some kind of relationship to the listener. Uh, and it's upon their demand, not on the push, that defines uh, when the listening situation happens. And from a museum point of view, I, I find it very interesting. I've been, uh, I've, for over the last year, I've had this mobile office. I've been moving around in Stockholm in, in 24 different office spaces with my uh, a piece of furniture that I built that I called the Trojan Bureau. And uh, two weeks ago we were at the Technical Museum and we were actually sitting across uh, to their radio studio that they have there, where you can today record podcasts, but before it was more of a focus on amateur radio. And, but what the podcast has done in a way is that it has moved the radio out from the Technical Museum and into other museum spaces. Uh, with more focus on, on content, I would claim. So one of the, the bigger podcasts is from Victoria and Albert, which is talking about museum development and their different exhibitions. And as in, in your museum, you have five different programs that are running, and it's very little technical focus on and this. Is the, the radio idea is sort of already there. It, it is not a technical thing. So we can very easily do it ourselves. And the, the big question is, is not this technological aspect and the, the frequencies and wavelengths. It's rather the purpose of why you do it that is the challenge for you as a, as a creator of a podcast. Um, so I made a, a list of some different answers that people have been given to why they created the podcast. No, sorry, different order. First, it, uh, what does this, what can a podcast do for your institution and where in the media mix of different medias uh, does the, the pod suit? So if we would say that there is some kind of engagement ladder that the, the audience can sort of tap into your institution, deeper different deeper into your institution, your, your first meeting with the audience will be through some kind of mass media that is uh, newspaper pushed in some way and they, they might not even know of you uh, and a little bit higher up in the hierarchy people will watch your YouTube channel or some kind of uh, ad that you place and if they like it they might uh, subscribe to your Twitter channel or your newsletter uh, or take the catalog that you have even more engaged behavior would be to go to an event that you create or take a guided tour. Whilst podcast is even higher up on this uh, engagement uh, ladder. So it's not a tool of marketing, it's rather a tool of uh, deepening engagement. So th that's where we should see this. You will not get new audience by this in most cases. 
it is the same thing as being almost a member of the museum association. But it can still build, strengthen the relationships, strengthening the brand, <coughs> give legitimacy in the same way as a yearly book gives you legitimacy. It's something you can send to your politicians and uh, civil servants. But it can also initiate uh, a development dialogue within the institution. And we will see examples of this. So, some different types of podcasts. So one very common is a, a conference podcast that you, without editing, just record a talk, a seminar of some kind. And, and the, in magazine uh, Tria, in the art hall in Stockholm, they've been doing this for many years. Probably the longest running uh, pod series in Sweden from a cultural institution. And, and they don't do anything with this. They, they start recording at the start of the seminar and they press stop in the end and then they push it online. Um, and maybe it doesn't have very many listeners, but it uh, is probably a very dedicated crowd. As if we, we see Sjöjus uh, Duriska, the Maritime Museum, they have a more of a knowledge pod. They use their researchers to package their some content around maybe a submarine or a special ship. And it's much harder edited. They have in, invested much more time in their... It's, it's more similar to educational TV or educational radio. Um, and they are sort of, you, they are, I, I, I guess, I, I wouldn't know, I don't work there, but I guess they uh, finance this through the, the assignment of getting information out to the whole country and not only uh, to have it for the users that come to the institution. Another rather common type of um, pod is the sector pod, or in Swedish I would call it branch pod. Uh, the, uh, one example of this is Riksutställningars pod, uh, Utställningssamtal, but it, it many different uh, sectors of society that has a, a metapod, uh, talking about the development of them. There is one about folk building, for example, um, that is looking at the political changes and so on. It's a niche market, maybe a couple of hundred listeners per pod, but since it's rather cheap to produce them, it's worthwhile. One slightly strange pod uh, is the support pod. And it's this, this one is from a, a, a bank, SBABIA. And they got very many repetitive questions about how to sell and buy your apartments and so on. So they decided, okay, since we say the same thing in telephone over and over again, why not make a pod about it? So they have created a, a support pod. Um, and the Taxi Stockholm, it's a taxi company, they have an internal pod for their co workers. And they have 3,500 taxi drivers in Stockholm. Uh, and the taxi landscape is constantly changing. They are building a new taxi terminal at Orlanda Airport. Okay, how does this work? Uh, do I need to check in before? What are the tariffs? They change. So they have a, a new pod that is purely for Stockholm-based taxi drivers. And you cannot listen to it if you are not part of their intranet. So it, it's, it, it's not for the general audience, but they find it worthwhile having a updated and uh, updated news channel that is audio-based because it suits their user base very well since they are waiting in their taxis now and then. And uh, so audio works very well. And then I, the, I guess radio, the experimentation of uh, pods is happening rather much in the format of either Snapchatty things that you have temporary time win of time frame when the pod is accessible, or by geo positioning that you can only listen to this in a specific place. This is a pod made by uh, Joachim Rindo at uh, Riksteatern, and it's about um, 
gay meeting spots in Stockholm. So, but you have to be on this very specific uh, geo-positioned place to be able to access the, the pod, and then you can listen to the dialogues. And this is done by the special app. It's, it cannot be listened to through iTunes because iTunes cannot deal position. So it, it requires a little bit of other management. Otherwise, the technology to do this is, is very standardized. You need your microphones, you need some kind of mixing device, and you need to press rake to get it into your computer and edit it. And you can edit a very cheaply, and I, I would recommend Audacity. It, it's a freeware, and, and it's one of the better to, to use. It has its limitations, of course, but um, it's very easy to use. And, uh, it's a, a, a quick way of getting started. But you could also uh, do it by buying a microphone that is prepared for a 3.5 millimeter plug. And, just put it in your own smartphone and do the recording uh, straight on your smartphone and the editing in the smartphone. But it's still good to buy an external microphone that has a bit of higher quality because it's, it's all about the sound quality. And if you don't get that quality, it, it's, very, it's not so nice to listen to. So that recording device, you need to invest a little bit in. But it's not that expensive, actually. And you could have be two people talking into one microphone. So, um, we will get to the price of that. So when, when you have done your recording and your editing in Audacity or in another like, uh, garage band, uh, SoundCloud has made a fantastic pod uh, distribution tool. So you can just upload it to SoundCloud and ask SoundCloud to get uh, the permission to be a pod user and if you will get that within 24 hours, and it's free to use SoundCloud, and then from SoundCloud it will immediately get distributed into, for example, iTunes. And that will make it easy for people to access your file. So you, you can almost do this uh, without adding any costs. And one of the cheaper microphones that is still of good quality, that is, uh, uh, compa compatible, compatible with the uh, iPhone would be cost from 170 euros. Uh, and if you need four microphones and a little mixing device, uh, if you put 1,300 euros, including TAT, you, you will have a, a, a great kit for recording. And then it's more, the bigger question is rather, what's the purpose? Why do I do this? That's the very important question to ask yourself. That's it for me. I mean, we heard that Magpa has a professional journalist working with the content part. Would you, what did you recommend an institution trying to engage its audience with a pod um, in that sense? About, I mean, when it comes to producing the content. Is this relevant to have someone um, with that background or? Yeah. Would you just uh, recommend them to press play and then, or record and then? Um, but it, it depends on what, what the purpose of, of, of the the thing is. Because if it is to to disseminate knowledge, I think it's it's better to have the pedagogues sitting down with the researchers and trying to okay, how do we package this so it becomes interesting? But of course, a a science journalist could maybe help, and that's one type of museum. Or, a curator in another, but um, but 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 if it is about sort of more critical things, maybe a journalist would, would do a very important job. It it it, it would connect to your purpose very much. Or who who does? <coughs> I think I think the key point is to have a good story. I mean, I don't know if it's necessary or if it's mandatory to be a journalist, but you need to be a storyteller. And, uh, and first of all, it comes the story, and after that, the medium you use to uh, share or spread, spread it. So in this sense, I think that 
for us, uh, when we started the project, we had stories to share. And Medium was something that helped us in a, to, to, to spread them in a different way. Um, or in, in, a, in a way that we didn't use to. But first of all, it's the story. And, and you need some skills, I, I guess, but not necessarily um, professional skills. I, I think there's a kind of a, you know, sparkling thing on uh, some people uh, that it's also important. But, but is, this, is that 100% true? Because let's say it's this, um, if it's a sector pot, I, then, as, as an example, isn't the, the, then the, the audience has a, a really high engagement already, and they just want to know what changes in the political landscape, and these are the new rules, and so on, and then you don't, then the storytelling is secondary. But of course, if you have a, a, a wider audience that is a more traditional museum visitors, then of course the story is super crucial to get the people to wow, I want to be part. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I guess, I guess. But it's, it's also purpose-driven, also on who, if that is. Relevant. The, the thing is that if if you have something to tell, um, nowadays it's pretty easy to to record it and distribute it. That is basically what you were sharing with us, and basically um, the idea, the seminal idea at Radio Web Mapa, that uh, the it didn't. You 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 talk about the equipment. We started with a digital recorder, uh, those Sony Discman records, and uh, and uh, I used a, a little storage uh, room to record myself because uh, myself I was doing the voices uh, as the introduction in the in the programs. Well, it was very homemade, everything, and it was really easy and very cheap. I remember I spent 300 euros in equipment in that moment, and that was it. That was, uh, um, so I agree, it, it's the, the conjunction of different elements, the story or, uh, or the goal that you have as telling something, and the easy um, way to produce and distribute, thanks to the internet. Are there any more direct comments? Uh, anyone else want to say something directly according to this context? No, because we're going to continue after lunch with a, with a panel. Sonia is invited back as well as Susan and Christer. Okay, I think we go for lunch then. <laughs>